Hey, what's up, guys? Little Man with a Big Opinion here. So, I'm starting a new kind of series within the channel where I answer questions that preppers have put forth, whether it's in a Facebook group or Reddit group. Uh, at one point, I was in a prepping group on iFunny. Uh, but people ask questions all the time. They get them answered in a comment form, but I thought I would make videos to answer their questions. And hopefully this will be a learning experience for everyone. Because you might not have this exact question, but you might be doing something similar. And hopefully, you know, the information you get from these videos helps you out. And if this information does help you out, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. But this question was on Reddit. The person described their scenario as, you know, they're a wilderness EMT. So they've got that training and they're getting ready to purchase their first house. Go crank that up. They're getting ready to purchase their first house where they'll be living in a uh, suburb outside of a major city. They live within 15 miles of the coast and they say they live in uh, the northeastern part of the United States. So I would, you know, they're trying to give as much information without you know, telling them, telling people exactly where this prepper lives. But my guess would be Washington or Oregon. Uh, and the question that they were asking was, you know, what kind of supplies could I purchase that I can use the training that I have to be able to help my neighbors? And so... To start off, I have two kind of answers for you. Uh, or One's more of a statement, the other one's an answer. I commend you for your, your first, first thing you want to think about is, you know, helping take care of your community. The other thing that I would say is, I don't think you should make that your first starting focus. I think your first starting focus should be how are you going to take care of yourself and it goes back to that image where you're on a plane the people on the plane always tell you you know put your mask on first before you put your kids mask on that way you know because if you're trying to put your kids on and you fail then both of y'all are not having a good time Whereas, you know, you got to take care of yourself first. In their message, they talk about, you know, living in a flood zone. So they want to have a throwable buoy. They want to have high visibility vests so that people know, hey, this person is trying to stand out. Uh, typically first responders and people like that wear that kind of stuff so that means this person is willing to help. They also talk about having small caches of food and water and a handful of blankets uh, but he also mentioned purchasing a few air mattresses if people needed a place to stay. So again I totally understand the wanting to help other people. I think you're putting yourself at a risk doing that. Not that I think every person in America is terrible, but, you know, conflict brings out the worst in us. And, you know, you reaching out and wanting to help take care of someone could end up you know, harming yourself. It doesn't really sound like there's a family involved, but I know having a wife and a kid, 
I'm not just going to let any Joe Schmo in my house. Now, the compromise to that would be maybe you purchase a couple of one or two man tents. It's fine if they stay in the yard, but I'm still going to lock my house up at night because, you know, I, I don't want to put myself in that situation. Now, if you know the person, you know, you need to have your own, you know, vetting system to decide what you're going to do. But I think you're being a little optimistic there. Uh, I think the better answer would be you've helped the person in the life-threatening situation um, send them on towards an organization that focuses on providing people shelter and, you know, stuff like that. That's my opinion on that part. Um, the idea of a food cache is a wonderful thing. Uh, again, you kind of have to be careful on that. But if you have, you know, pre-packaged, you know, that's, that's what FEMA does. People line up, they get, you know, supplies to keep themselves alive, and, you know, they send them on, on their way. So I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, having some sort of system like that set up. Things to consider on that is, again, worrying about your safety is are people going to go crazy when they figure out that you have food and you know dealing with the mob mentality so do you want to compromise and you know put them on your porch that way if people need them they can get them without compromising your safety um you know the risk of doing that is you know people taking more than they need and, you know, is your system of helping people ruined after the first one or two groups come by? Uh, because, you know, people in that situation are thinking about survival. You know, they might be thinking in their head, you know, it's awesome that this is prepackaged to be two or three days worth of food. But I don't know when the next time I'm going to get food is. So I'm just going to grab three of them. Or, you know, God forbid the people are just fine and they come by and pick it up because, you know, they see an opportunity there and they're going to take it. So, that's a situational awareness thing that, you know, you need to figure out how you're going to deliver those caches. Um, he brought up hazmat suits. I think that's getting into a niche category of prepping where, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I don't think you should spend your money to provide a whole hazmat suit. Um, that's something that as we push people to be preppers, you know, that's something they should purchase on their own. Um, he also mentioned, you know, having the first aid supplies to render aid to people. He's got the training. Um, in a lot of these situations, you know, that falls under the, the Good Samaritan Act. You know, do as much as you're trained to be able to do, and if it's life-threatening and help cannot get there, then do as much as you're comfortable doing past your training. But, you know, unless your goal is to run some sort of, like, lifeline, uh, you know, emergency trauma, I would focus on the boo-boo kit kind of items and, you know, maybe some stuff that can help stabilize people until the higher trained people can get involved. Also, you know, depending on the situation, they might not want local help and they're going to, you know, the, the state, local, and federal government are gonna, you know, target you for, you know, you're putting yourself at harm's way 
to do this stuff and as we've seen with the latest hurricane uh there seems to be a lot of you know don't worry i'm the government and i'm here to help all of y'all go away uh but that's kind of getting political that's not the point of this video and then the one comment that i will mention is you know a lot of people have said instead of you know focusing on the reactive try focusing more on the proactive you know offer up some sort of class where you discuss the major things that can happen in your area and you know advocate for the people in your neighborhood to prepare for themselves uh, you know FEMA recommends 72 hours of food and water in every home I know every home I know every home does not have that all the time and it can be difficult based off of your you know budget situation uh, the last video I made talks about buying budget prepping items and I'm going to continue to make those kind of videos because not everyone can spend ten thousand dollars on preps or you know a hundred dollars a month and they've got to be strategic on what they buy and when they buy it and how they're going to you know dish out their you know prepping plan but it does make it a lot easier to help the community if you know, let's say there's a hundred homes in your suburb. If you're the only person that has prepared and is willing to offer some sort of aid, um, you know, unless you're a multimillionaire, you're not going to be able to cover your entire neighborhood. But if, you know, a dozen of the homes prepare to even half the level that you prepare to, that helps that many more people. If 25% or 25 of the homes can get to that point, you know, you're, you'll slowly get to a number where something bad happens, y'all, you know, you're prepared, you group up, and you can almost deal with the situation on your own. And, you know, that's getting yourself to a level of self-sustainability or you've stacked to the rafters enough where you can weather you know these small conflicts and then as a prepper you know you never hit a finish line um you know you're always you know you start with that bug out bag and you've got your 72 hours worth of i can take care of myself my family then you set your home up for a week's worth of the SHTF problem. Then you set your home up for two weeks, and then a month, and then three months, six, a year. And then you start looking at, all right, well, I've got all these supplies. I've got this nice safety net that you've set up. Now I'm looking at how am I going to replenish these things when I've used them up. It's a marathon. It's never going to end. I The first time I put rice in a mason jar, I was like 14 and The Walking Dead had just come out and, you know, I felt like I could survive the zombie apocalypse. And now, over a decade later, all of the resources spent, all of the time spent, all of the skills learned, I feel a lot more comfortable now than I did well, at least not thinking then, but knowing, you know, from the first year to the third year to the fifth to the decade, I can feel a lot more comfortable about my situation. And the more I make these videos and learn new skills, the more that I go out and purchase items that can help my prepping situation the better I feel and the more I can you know just be prepared but hopefully I answered 
that question, uh, the Reddit is just called Prepping. There's like 77,000 people in it. Haven't really started posting anything in it. I'm more just uh, observing and, you know, making a few comments here or there. But, again, if you learned something from the video, it'd really help if you liked it. If you enjoy what we're doing with the channel, hit the subscribe button. And lastly, if you've got a friend or family member that benefit from these videos, share the channel with them. And with that, catch you in the next one.